Okay, so the roadmap is out. Let's talk about it. So the big thing to take away is that it looks like season three is not going to be launching in November. Instead, we're getting a winter update that's going to last from November to March. And then with March to June is going to be season three. So let's kind of break it all down so we're all on the same page and then we'll discuss it later. Again, I'll timestamp the whole video if you guys want to skip around to the parts you want to see. So this is basically what I was expecting to see that we'd probably see everything that was planned to be released before season three get pushed to the original season three release date. This actually might be a better move because we have Call of Duty and also God of War Ragnarok coming like before and right after these event releases. So it's probably best to actually just kind of like let those two games kind of battle it out when it comes to population, honestly. But we're getting the Forge beta. It's not flight, it's like an open beta this time. And also getting campaign network co-op with mission replay. Now, from my experience, when I played this flight, it was really great. There were some minor bugs here and there, but nothing really that would make me want to think about a delay. But obviously, 343 has really high standards when it comes to the releases, so that makes sense. We're getting a brand new 30 tier pass, which is gonna be very exciting. It's gonna be filled with a lot of excellent reach stuff for you guys. They mentioned how you will progress through this as match XP which we'll get into a little bit later in this video but that'd be kind of like the main way to progress through this the challenges are not going away though they'll still be involved with it in some capacity but the armor that's gonna be involved with this pass guys is gonna be the cqc cqb the knife shoulders and knife chest plate which i know a lot of you guys have seen your comments you want your cqc you want your cqb well it's coming with the winter update and three for three mentions that they want to take that time during this pass to test out match xp and gather player data to see like if they're going to be working properly or as intended so when season three rolls around we have a new paid battle pass that the data that they collected should probably function properly when it comes to match xp but match xp sounds like more kind of like an extension of the challenge system where basically you'll be rewarded based on the time and your experience while playing so how well you do in the game the better you do the more xp you will earn on top of i guess also doing the challenges will probably be more of a boost where the current match xp is kind of negligible at this point where like the current match xp doesn't really like progress you that much and it's pretty slow and kind of sluggish and not really the main way to drive through it sounds like match xp is going to be the main way you progress through the battle passes moving forward where the challenges are kind of like a little boost to kind of get you through everything it'll be interesting to see what's the most effective mode to play right they did say that based on time and also how well you play you'll get xp but there's always been like a preferred game mode when it comes to grinding down xp and once that does drop i'll make sure to let you guys know on the channel it looks like we'll be getting two events as well a return of the winter contingency event let's see if there's any new content that comes with that we also have a january event called joint fire they didn't mention about this at all they just stated that that's what's happening we have covert one flag which is kind of like a an asymmetrical loadout mode it's a one flag mode that's attack defense where the attacking team gets pulse carbines sidekicks and unlimited camo where the defending team gets the commander rifle a sword and unlimited threat sensors the round based mode and coming with the launch of the winter update on november 8th now this mode definitely has some big imbalances when it comes to the loadouts but that's kind of the idea of it it's kind of more like we just have to wait and see how it plays out before we really judge if it's going to be a good mode now let's get into the season three content this season three will be launching on march 7th and running until june 27th so that you can see here Basically, we have a cadence of roughly three, four months for each content update. So we will be getting more content over time. It's just that they had to delay season three, it sounds like. We're getting two new maps, an arena map and a big team battle map, as well as the bandit rifle. Now they didn't reveal the names of these new maps, but it sounds like they're a good step in the right direction, where the BTB map is heavily focused on vehicle gameplay, much more open, much more freedom of movement for vehicles, which I think is the biggest issue when it comes to BTB right now, that you have these very thin lanes to drive your vehicles through a lot less freedom of movement with that and not a lot of creativity available that's gonna be a really great change when it comes to the BTB maps they said it's the biggest map they've ever made too so that's gonna be pretty fun to play around with they also have the arena map they said it's an asymmetrical map probably good for like strongholds maybe a little ctf or something like that as well we finally got some official information about the bandit rifle which is gonna be looking and kind of feel like the dmr but much more tuned for close range where compared to the traditional dmr it was much more like a battle rifle replacement along 
long, more long range kind of weapon. So this is built more for close range with no scope and there's no D scope because you'll be using the smart links, which is gonna be an interesting game mechanic for sure. Now some of the previous gameplay that I have shown on the channel actually has been taken down, which is kind of surprising here, but you can kind of see the DMR in action here on Twitter. There's a good amount of vertical recoil with the whole thing. And there is some bloom, but I think it's much more of a visual bloom, much more than an actual bloom like we had in Reach. Again, it's more tuned for close range engagement. So we'll kind of see how this really plays out. Uh, I'm definitely excited for it though. We have the official reveal of the shroud screen, which is going to be acting like a smoke screen to get some details about that, as well as a hundred tail battle pass that has with the SBI core, which is actually currently an MCC coming over to Halo Infinite. The official details of the shroud screen says it's going to act like a high tech smoke screen is what they mentioned here. So it doesn't block projectiles or anything like that. But when you're inside the shroud screen, you don't show up on radar even when shooting. You get two charges off of a pad. You can hold up to four in total. They also mentioned a custom game browser coming with season three, which can be huge for Forge and custom games right there. In-game reporting, a VIP mode, which is gonna be guess, just regular VIP. I've heard there's like VIP mogul and different kind of variations about that as well. Escalation, which sounds to be like Escalation Slayer from MCC, like gun game essentially coming into Halo Infinite. We have a new Fracture event, new Nerve event, Forge open beta updates, as well as quality of life improvements. There is one pretty big bit of sad news though when it comes to season three, that campaign split screen co-op is delayed beyond season three, which originally was the initial release of that feature. Uh, now it's just kind of been thrown in the back burner because we're really focusing on trying to make sure that the gameplay experience of playing Halo Infinite as a live service actually is a live service. And 343 actually provided a list of actual improvements they're looking to do with Halo Infinite over this next few months. They said they wanted to be infinitely rewarding with match XP, like we talked about earlier, improvements to events, a career rank, so like career progression, sounds like be coming in, at least like within total season three, it sounds like ranked rewards, something a little bit more than just like a uh, emblem like we get right now. Uh, seasonal career challenges is where career challenges is gonna be really nice to have some long-term build up kind of stuff for you to play around with. They also wanted to be personal and welcoming, saying significantly more distinctive and varied customization options. So I'm assuming more cross core probably coming in with that, as well as more intuitive and personal playlist options, UI, UX. They specifically mentioned about uh, the MCC and how well that one's doing. And they sound like they wanted to kind of carry over that into Halo Infinite. So most likely the match composer probably coming into Halo Infinite as well at some time. Improved player onboarding, so maybe integrate the academy a little bit better right there. Player safety and reporting, essentially just help out with cheating in-game reporting like we mentioned earlier. And also they want to be competitive and fair. They use the term competitive within like this video saying that Halo's traditionally been a competitive game, which it is. It is like, it's not saying that competitive lies in like, you know, ranked hardcore, super sweaty mode. It's talking about competitive is like you jump in, you play against your friends and get high scores. That's genuinely competitive. And so that's what they meant by competitive and fair. So it's like multiplayer gameplay improvements. Basically they say, basically said it without saying it that they're working on desync and they want to fix up desync to make sure that probably by season three in March, that things are working rather well for the integrity of playing the game online right now. I say additional ranked options, probably more matchmaking options right there, as well as matchmaking improvements, probably something tied in with the matchmaking uh, rank right there or CSR. A C server and input matchmaking options will probably be good to choose like, okay, I want to have more specific things they mentioned about region selection coming into the game soon. So they'll probably talk about that. Anti-cheat improvements, because obviously it's a never ending war against cheaters right there. A stable and high quality stability performance. And we'll, we'll see that hopefully come around. That's always gonna be something that's gonna be improving with Halo Infinite stability and performance. And we'll just see what comes around when it comes to that. Uh, customization experience upgrades as well, probably continuing on with the idea of cross core system coming into Halo Infinite as well as different visual UI improvements. So these are all just kind of like quality of life stuff. Okay, so we got through all the information. So what are my thoughts and opinions on this, right? They're, they're, everyone different has their opinions on Halo right now. As it has been for the entire first year of Halo Infinite, it's a step in the right direction. 343 did state that they wanted to try to get more continuous seasonal updates at a regular basis. About every three or four months is what they mentioned. And that sounds like this is like their way of getting to that point by hopefully when season three releases, we're gonna be getting three month seasons like that were originally promised before the release of the game coming in. This is the step in the right direction. There's never gonna be a single switch, flick of the switch where Halo Infinite is gonna be amazing. Everyone's gonna wanna jump in and play. It's gonna be over time, incremental improvements like we're seeing right here. And I knew that was going to be the case 
pace. There's never going to be like one update that's going to make the game amazing or anything like that. You know, I've lived through this when it comes to Battlefield 4. I've lived through this where like every Call of Duty, basically the first year is just like, you know, trying to update to make the game good. And once it does, the new game comes out. I've lived through this when it comes to Destiny 1. When it comes to Destiny 2, uh, Rainbow Six Siege first year was awful as well. But like they end up becoming great games because the development teams stuck with them and kept iterating and fixing. With that said though, I can't help but feel a little sad. Like I was really looking forward to playing around with co-op and the Forge beta before November. That's not happening. Uh, you know, I do like the 30 tier and also the additional armor when it comes to the Reach stuff that's not currently in the game. You guys are gonna be very happy about that. Uh, these two new Forge maps, um, they're all right, I guess. Again, it's just like two arena maps. Uh, don't I, don't I don't really know how i feel about it honestly it's like it's just kind of like a couple of new maps that are like it's like yeah yeah it's kind of cool and stuff like that match xp beta and stuff like that it definitely is a step in the right direction like i mentioned earlier so this stuff right here it's like it seems like they're just kind of stretching out the content that we should be getting in november and kind of stretching that over the next six months or so whatever however long it is really uh if you had like those two forge maps as well as these two developer made maps coming in with november i'd be excited I don't know why we have to wait until March to get the bandit rifle. It's like, just, I don't know why we can't add it into the game. Same thing with like the shroud screen. Like we, we've seen the leaks, it's in the game. It works, it visually looks like how it's supposed to. Why not throw it in with November to kind of just get some people excited about it. But of course, then you kind of stretch out the content. So then when season three official releases that there is some fun, cool stuff to do right now. So that's what it, really what it feels like right now to me. Like I said, it's a step in the right direction, but it just feels like it's just kind of thin content drops that we're still receiving. I'm hoping by season three, which they're saying it's gonna be three months. We'll see if that changes though. And uh, hopefully we get some more continuous updates every three months rather than have to wait six months or an entire year for two maps. Let me know your thoughts of Halo Infinite in the comments down below and be civil. If you wanna see what those two Forge maps coming in November are looking like, well, check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.